5.30 on the dot. Can you all, uh, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Like fucking, uh, can you see me? Was that Tommy? The who? The who? Can you hear me? Please tell me you can fucking hear me. Uh, I can, I can see me. Gentle dudes, can you hear me? Check, check, check. Nobody's responding and saying if they can hear me or not. This is alarming me. How we looking? Check one, two. Yes, 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 yes. Does this, look, does this look way fucking better than last time? I'm fucking psyched about this. Um, We got 23 viewers. All right. We had 70 the other night when I did my short notice fucking thing. Um, Maybe this is too early, like... I guess I picked a bad time to be in love. But we got like 25, 22, 20. Just lost two. Jesus. My that fucking... My that fucking uh, prickly and uh, abrasive. Um, This looks so much fucking better. I'm on the Mac. I got the fucking shed wired for fucking power. The uh, shed of ex existential dread and the living dead reborn. I got it wired for power. Not right now because it's pouring rain out right now. And the power strip that I'm using to power it from the houses, I wouldn't want to um, kill a neighbor on accident or anything like that. But uh, I think this looks better. Does this look better? All right. Yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, all right. So we'll do the quick list. And then we'll get into this, even though I have absolutely fucking nothing planned. Bradford Taylor, he's the first guy here both times. Brad, I'm going to send you a flashlight. Uh, you christened and used by myself, uh, cause you evidently got too much time on your hands if you're just sort of, uh, <laughs> watching my channel to see if something pops up. Uh, but you always make me laugh. Peter Evers, you were the second guy here tonight. Uh, hey, Daka, uh, from the, you're from the Netherlands, huh? What pot? Uh, I love the Netherlands. In fact, I would move there if y'all would have me. Um, John Hansen, good to see you again. You're another, another Dutchman. I.E. Hoist. Um, I got the Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm surprised you're not a fan of it. I consider it the champagne, the, the Dom Perignon of fucking, uh, diet, diet beverages. Uh, Everyday RC, Wasted Youth Crew Indeed, motherfucker. John Val, good to see you, brother. Um, something weird just happened. I don't, I don't know what just happened. Uh, warn me if anything bizarre happens with the screen or anything. Uh, it, John, don't worry about missing it. Uh, it's because it's. I'm going to probably leave it up unless I go crazy and get nude or finally stick that Mrs. Butterworth bottle up my ass on film. Uh, Nicholas Matea Gill, what's up, brother? Tick tock, tick tock. Uh, Bishop X, I got nothing interesting to say either, but it never stops me. Doesn't matter how small your dick is, wave it around at the world. What else can you do? Um... Uh, Matt, one, two, three, two, 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 one. What's up, brother? Dito, what's going? How are you holding up, Dito? Down there in um, fucking uh, the Congo down there with the fucking outbreak, fucking hot zone. It's coming. It's coming. Everybody else. Siete, siete, trace. Got ya. Fat Scott. Pills and syringes. <laughs> I can't say I can't relate. I just uh don't don't anymore. Shotgun facelift. What's up, brother? Hey, Connor, what's going on, man? How are things? Connor Drury. Um, how's the BJJ going? Um, Tiffany Harden, what's up, hon? How you hanging in there? Fat Scott, good to see you again. Hockey Hooligan. Oh, I just lost a bunch of viewers. What the fuck happened? Uh, Nikazi Skin. Uh, Justin Jack, what's up? Johnny Disaster, what's going on, Johnny? Eric Lintz, what's going on? Is, is is the thing still on? Can you guys still see me? Because I just dropped like 20 viewers in like two seconds. It's lagging again. Yeah, it did some sort of reset. And you guys know anything about this? It's saying that my current resolution is not optimum. And I can change it. Um. Oh, so now it's lagging. Fuck, man. I don't know what to do about this stuff. Uh, team no head in the oven, indeed. Uh, 
And I don't think I can change it on the fly. Stream health. It's good right now. It says uh, it says the video resolution is um, not optimum, but it doesn't tell me what fucking what's optimum. It just keeps. I tried every fucking video resolution that it allowed me to try, and every time it's just not optimum. I'm like, well, tell me what's fucking optimum then. If you lower your resolution, it'll probably improve your lag time. Uh, hang tight for a second. You might lose me for a second. Don't lose your shit. Uh, I'll be right back. I don't. Oh man, I hope I don't fucking blow this. Computer. So just lower. Uh, what's up, uh, Sarcasticus the, Iro- the Ironic? I love your name. I am a, a sardonic motherfucker myself. Free Burkhart, what's up, hon? Uh, let me kick you off for a sec. Okay. Um, hey, t- take it easy, Johnny. I'm glad you stopped by. Um, I'll hit you up later. Chucky e. Goria, what's going on, brother? Alex Clark, how you doing? Uh, it's still working. Oh, fuck, dude. Justin, I'm sorry to hear that. Justin got the coronavirus. And you're in a sober house? You must have caught it there, obviously. Um, how you feeling? All right. Hang, hang tight for one second. If I lose you, I'm sorry, but it was a successful test and my love to you all, but I hope this works. Give me one second. Jack, Jack, better? Did I lose you? Billy Moonbeam, what's going on, brother? Um, we got another video. Me and Billy did another video, and it will be coming out shortly. Um, and the video we did, the videos I had to pull, they're going back up this week, hopefully. All right, it just refreshed. Uh, still hanging on? Check, check. Oh, dude, I'm sorry to hear that. Justin, um, are they severe? I heard it, it. Everybody has some difficulty breathing with it, but uh, General Mansky, what's going on, hon? Um, Romanowski, excuse me. Uh, Justin, uh, fucking hang in there. Um, Dom from Ramallah got it. He's better now. One of my mother's friends that she talks to on Facebook, she got it. She's really elderly. She didn't even really know what she had. It was only that they did a mandatory test on her. She said, I just, she said, I've had, uh, had colds that kick my ass worse. Now, obviously, that's not uh, a universal experience by a long shot with this thing, but um, it's getting worse. Oh, it is. How many days into you? Uh, yeah, I, uh, Peter Reverse. Yeah, that's the case. Genetics, the human factor. Um, Mr. Man, what's going on, brother? Yeah, I think the quality's better. Uh, Tony Clifton Jr., sound is good, resolution's good, okay. Um, Tony, thank you for stopping by. I'm going to do these later next time. I just wanted to do a test. I had no idea if this gear was going to work. Uh, you're like five days in. Fuck. Um, and it, and it feel, feels like it's getting worse. They're keeping an eye on you there? I hope. Um, I've heard, for Dom, it peaked at about 48 to 60 hours. And then he started to feel incrementally better. David Goldsmith, what's going on, brother? Uh, all right, so I hope the stream's still working. Got up to about 40 people, a little under. Dropping here and there. I can't tell if that's because it's booting people. I've heard some things like that, Bradford, that there's an antiviral. Uh, Matt, you're up in Colebrook. Uh, New Hampshire right now is like 38th in the country. It's the only area in New England that's not like one of those bright red zones. Um, yeah, I bet. I bet, Justin. Um, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll post a link on my social media from a doctor about how you can be around somebody and not catch it if you're cautious. It really comes down to, um, you know, if somebody's coughing and spraying droplets. I, I, I'm not going to go into this uh, because I am not an authority and I've seen so many fucking talking heads out there yapping um, authoritative, uh, authoritatively and uh, I ain't that guy. Um, I've heard that about uh, uh, quinine. 
uh, Bradford. I've heard about different antivirals as well. Uh, did you lose me again? Something happened? No dice on mobile. Motherfucker. What's up, Matt Pathetic? How you been, brother? Um, uh, fuck. I will, Justin. Uh, if I, I gotta find the video. Um, we've talked, uh, Bishop X, we've talked about doing something like that. Um, right now I'm pretty isolated though, cause, um, I live with, um, my mom and, and, and this would not be something she could get. So I've been, I've, f because of that, um, I've been, you know, laying really low. I, 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 I'm not even confident I would fare well with this fucking thing, but, um, cause of the way I've treated myself over the years, but, uh, definitely not trying to bring it to my, 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 my mother. She's, um, it w that would be bad. Um. All right, so Evan, it sounds like it's not working that well on devices like a phone or whatever. Um, Vladimir Battle. Hey, hold on, brother. Um, down from, how's uh, how's Bogata? Uh, Pete Campbell, what's up, brother? All right, so it came back, it went off and came on. It looks like the people that are on computers are getting a better signal. I, I know nothing about this shit. I am like hacking my way through it. What's up, shitty Jim? Uh, out in Chicago, I haven't been there in a while. I, I heard they're getting hit hit pretty hot as well. Um, uh, so what the fuck else should we talk about instead of this um uh, pestilence? I'm gonna try to figure some more stuff out. I don't like I said. I don't know shit about frame rates, resolution, nothing, nothing. Uh, oh good. So it's working on some people's phones. I guess it's. This shit is arcane voodoo. This shit is inscrutable to me. I don't know why something works one day and why it doesn't the other day. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. Uh, I said it's a nice time to listen to the uh, Blood for Blood and Ramallah shit. Um, sarcastic, sarcastic is the ironic. I'm in. New, I'm from New York. A few of us used to go up to Boston, went to a little place in Brockton. Oh yeah, Romans. Yep. Um, I I nearly got killed there, this crackhead that had been hanging around the bar and came up to the show. Uh, Ramallah was playing there and he fucking bull rushed me because he thought, I guess that's what he was supposed to do and threw me through uh, Ramallah's drummer's kit and the fucking hi-hat stand, that piece of metal that stands up, practically impaled me through my fucking kidney. It seriously went like three inches in. I had like a dig that I could probably hide Tic Tacs in for like a week. Zach and Julie Lopez, what's up, hon? Oh, dude. Tracy, what's going on, brother? Yeah, better. Yeah. I, ho I hope you're hanging in there. Nick M, what's up, brother? Uh, I tell Leah, said, what's up, Pete? Uh, Justin, uh, Jack said, what are we going to do with uh, just one shot and dead girls? Uh, we, when, when, I'm not going to... When the EP came out recently, The Last Gas, we were in the middle of recording the full length. Uh, and versions of Dead Girls, The Undertakers, all these songs I've been talking about forever were in the process of being recorded, but we had to sidestep. Um, Tiffany Hodden, yes, we are going to do new merch and shit like that. I'm trying to do a whole bunch of new things. I want to get a, a, a personal webpage up so you don't got to hunt through the Ramallah stuff to find like Nodcast crap like the blood, blood prints and such. Um, uh, let's talk about the BFB soccer, right? Well, which one, the real one or the one we got on, um, the recording, the one we got on the recording, I just had a bunch of my lunatic friends come into the studio and prior to it, the producer, Jim, had hit everything breakable. So we just had trash cans, uh, folding chairs, wooden chairs, and about 200 beer cases of bottles and whiskey bottles. Basically, we saved all of our booze that we've been drinking in the project and turned the mic on and we just flung the shit all around and dudes were like chairing each other in the back. But that was just fun. Uh, <clears throat> I'm wheezing. Maybe I got it. Uh, the one we called the football riot. I mean, every Blood for Blood show had something horrible go on. Somebody asked me recently on Twitter... Can you tell any anti-flag stories? Because we were on tour with anti-flag and the Dropkick Murphys. And I can tell you a couple. We got along with those guys really great. They were really nice kids, even though they were older than us. I couldn't help but think of them as kids. 
because they were like the meekest, nicest, most unassuming, unthreatening punk rock dudes I've ever met. They were just really nice guys. I'm not saying that to diminish them, but we were definitely from different sides of the fence. And we played at Fitzgerald's down in Texas one night. And uh, half the audience was white power skinheads. The other half of the audience was Chicano gangbangers. And the minute we took the stage, it was like Braveheart. They just charged each other and went fucking berserk. It was like a war. And when Anti-Flag went on, uh, there were ceramic covers on the lights. And uh, dudes in the audience were throwing the ceramic covers at Anti-Flag for whatever reason. They didn't throw them at us. And there were three fights during their set. So after the show, uh, we were talking. And the drummer was wicked bummed out. And this is the... I'm, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm telling this story to illustrate the different sides of the fence. Blood for Blood and Anti-Flag Run, even though we got along really well. And I loved their music. Uh, New Kind of Army is one of my favorite fucking albums. But the drummer after the show was super bummed. And I went over and I was like, brother, what's going on? You, you, you got a look of sadness on your face. And he said... Uh, Dude, there were like, there were like three fights during our set, and they were throwing shit. And I was like, three fights? That's fucking great. And he's like, what the fuck do you mean great? He's like, that's fucking horrible. You're saying you like fights? I'm like, no, I'm saying it's awesome. You only had three of them. I'm like, did you watch our set? It was one big fight. There were like nine stabbings, for Christ's sakes. And the guy was just like, I don't know how you can do this. Like, I'm like, I don't have any choice. I don't tell anybody what to do, and they're not going to listen to me. I'm like, it's, it's just what it is. But, um, the other story, uh, about them was, and I'm a little bummed because one of the other nights in Texas, there were a bunch of, um, sketchy dudes there. Uh, they were like, uh, neo-Nazi dudes and they hate an anti-flag, of course. So they were going to go out into the audience to say hi to the fans and stuff after. And I stopped them because I heard some of the guys saying, if I get my hands on one of those anti-flag dudes. So I, I, Justin was going by the singer, and I was like, Justin, tell you guys, don't go out there tonight. Tonight's a bad night to go to go fucking glad handing. And he's like, Why? I, I see people I know. I'm like, Don't go out there. And he's like, What? What? And I'm like, Would you look at the bar? And he looks. He's like, Those guys look kind of mean. And I'm like, Yeah. And they don't like you. And they're covered with politically inspired uh, tattoos and stuff. And and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll tell the guys. And he went back in. And they didn't thank us on their record. I was fucking pissed about that. But we did give them a bag of puke. Uh, they used to have this thing on their website where they'd say, uh, being in a touring band is, um, uh, being in a touring band is difficult. Um, you know, it's hard being on the road. Bring us snacks. And they had a list of snacks like ring dings and ho-hos and all this stuff that they like, Doritos. So we got a bunch of grocery bags uh, full of the stuff that they liked. And I had barfed horrifically on the ride to the show earlier that day. I had been drinking until like fucking nine in the morning. We just hit the road at about 10. I very quietly filled a, a bag of puke. Guys had the windows open. It was fucking disgusting, but we held on to it. We put all the goodies in and gave it to them. And they all ran over and they were like, oh, ring dings, oh, Dunkin' Donuts, or whatever, fucking Doritos. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, got all over their hands. We were like, hee. But um, yeah, that, that was that. Uh, somebody had asked me to, if you got any funny anti-flag stories. I said, yeah, it's about as, because they didn't, it was nothing crazy went on with them. They were like, they were just professional musicians, but, uh, all right. So what we got going on here? Um, there's other stuff that happened on that tour that I can't talk about. I'd have to get Ken Casey's permission to talk about it. I'm sure he'll willingly talk about it. Nick M, what's going on, brother? Um, uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, send send the pictures on social media if you can. I collect them all. I save them all. I got fucking folders of the tattoos. And the Ramallah ones are not catching up. I mean, the, Ramallah's never going to have as many as Blood for Blood. That was like the tattoo for about 20 years. That was like the, the new black flag logo. But um, there are a lot of Ramallah tattoos out there now. Uh, if you have Smart TV, you can cast it on here. Oh, no shit. Uh, Peter versus... I probably have it too. Minus symptoms. All right, that's good. Um, oh, John, you got you're you're an asymptomatic carrier. Um, Eggman three, what's up, brother? Yeah, please do, please do. Uh, yeah, Eric, that might be the case. Is this still fucking up real bad? 
Um, I, I might have to get a Wi-Fi extender and bring it out to the shed. Uh, Corey Home Music, what's up, brother? The the, the yeah the, the the stream looks better in general. I just don't know if it's fucking up. Kush King four twenty, what's going on? I'm glad you're feeling better. I saw a couple of your fucking uh your posts. I, I replied to a few of them, but I'm glad you're feeling better after that Caesar shit. Uh, Billy Moonbeam and Connor Drury both asking what a talk about finding the key to my heart. Uh, Connor asked, what do you think of the UFC trying to make Khabib and Tony happen now that the sport's shut down? And uh, Billy says, is Khabib hiding from Ferguson? Um, I believe what happened with Khabib is probably the truth. It sounds like a total fucking clusterfuck. Uh, he flew, he was training at, at fucking um, AKA, like he always does. And he fucking uh, flew over to the United Arab Emirates, Emirates to where they were going to do the show. But they were closing their borders. He didn't want to get stuck there. So the UFC told him, hey, go to Russia and we'll figure it out later. Well, now he's stuck in Russia and he, he's not going to get cleared to go anywhere. Um, so that that's legit. Um, whether there's an underlying motive, I don't know. I would not want to fucking fight uh, Tony Ferguson. Um, under any circumstances whatsoever. I mean, everybody that's fought him is never the same after, and everybody that's fought him after they're done looks like they stuck their head in a hay baler. That dude is... He's like the MMA equivalent of, like, death a death eater. Like, he's a practitioner of the dark arts. He mutilates people. Uh, but, Connor, I don't know if you know, Khabib's out of that fight. They're doing uh, Gaethje and um, uh, Ferguson now. They're doing Gaethje and Ferguson. Um... Uh, Mr. Man, yes, I am. I've been writing a lot lately. Because uh, what what the fuck else am I going to do? DRC, what's up, brother? Uh, Remy Husby, or Husby. Uh, I would give anything to get back to fucking uh, Norway with either uh, with any of my bands. Um, okay, thanks, Billy. Uh, drugstore Cowboy. I would love to have Colin of Arabia on. I had him on. I had Colin and my brother Jimmy Knuckles. And we did two hours of fucking shit. And the audio was almost useless. It was the worst audio disaster I've had. It was... Uh, we. I was using the camera. The little camera I used for the, the Nodcast. I've only started using the computer for this live shit. I, I use this little Geek Pro fucking hunk of shit camera. Um, it's like a... Uh, it's not even a real Geek Pro. It's like a copy. Like a generic brand uh and it was feet feet away i was closest then jimmy then colin was way down the end this was in the old attic we got like two hours of footage but it, i couldn't use it like you literally couldn't hear anybody but really me from that i was turned to them it was just a disaster i was so bummed it was one of the best times i had recording somebody uh with with a guest on because i don't have any people you know want to do it um uh, but I'd love to have him back. That is for certain. Uh, Pete Evers asks, what was the reason behind the Ace of Spades cover? Uh, I think we just had the opportunity to do the comp. And since it was victory, we had I had already been fooling around with the song. I was like, that song could be turned into a hardcore song real easy. And um, it was good timing. We, uh, Revenge had just come out. We were recording Exile anyway. And... uh. They said, you want to do the comp? I was like, yeah, block out Ace of Spades for us. They were like, well, I think, and they named some bigger band. I think they wanted. I was like, it's us or them. Plant our feet. They were cool. They were like, yeah, take it. Um, I'm thinking of doing that too, Justin, getting a hyena somewhere like up in a visible place. But I've never gotten one of my band's tattoos on me. I've gotten some lyrics and shit like that. And I have White Trash Rob tattooed on my left arm like a douchebag. Ultimate douchebag. I was going to get... I don't know where the, I can't tell where the name is, but I was going to get it covered with a giant WTR. I'm like, that is like the Marilyn Manson video where he's got MM. I was like, that'd be a truly douchebag move. And and I'm with it. Uh, oh, Chucky, you wouldn't have to ask me. Uh, anybody, anybody that, that, that is like a, you know, that's like a genetic marker. It says to, when I see somebody with that ink, I'm like, I, I know things about that person. There is a common fucking experience there. 
And I, I feel that's the case with everybody with that. Um, all right, still working. I'm glad, KK. Uh, Kush King. I'm glad um, you're doing well. Uh, the Hunter. Yeah, Colin was fun, man. It's just uh, I blew the fucking audio. I would I would know how to do it better now. Um, well, that's what happens with the black flag bars. They, if you don't get them real defined, they blur. Cause a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of people's first tattoos. You know what I mean? Like, um, you get it done by a friend with like Indian ink or something like that. Um, oh, I'd love to have Joe Hardcore on. Mark Noah would be like that'd be like having Elvis on. Um, I haven't had him on. Uh, we were talking about it a while ago, and then my life fell to complete shit. Um, but uh, he would be the man, because Mark Noah is one of the most interesting human beings I've ever met. In an, in, in a completely unique way. He has not lived the way many of us, like the, a lot of the common experiences we have here, prison and stuff like that. He is one of the most interesting dudes. That, that guy is fucking mad interesting. Oh, I love it, Billy. Oh, two one two nine. Yeah, I'd do that. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jess. Uh, Jessica Push says uh, that he liked the covers of the Oppressed and the Angelic Upstarts better than Ace of Spades. There's a fucking funny story with the uh, those two covers. We had just done a long tour. I think it was the Sick of It All fucking tour, and we got we're driving home. Uh, like 40 hours from like Texas or fucking the West Coast or some shit. And Roger and Ono start calling us because we said we'd do the comp months ago, months previously. We're at the end of this fucking long tour, this long drive. They say, you got to get in the studio tonight in New York City. So we get home at five in the morning. Uh, practice. I teach the band the songs in two fucking hours. I'm listening to them on the ride. I mean, I knew them, but I had to break them down. And I, I I wouldn't have known them perfectly. Get home, practice for two fucking hours from five in the morning till seven. Drive all the way to fucking New York. Record for the next 24 hours. Dude, stick a fork in me. I was fucking done. The trick with that is it ruins your voice. When you're that fucking exhausted, it ruins your fucking voice. Uh, Ian's got that. Corey Hall. Ian's got that tattooed on him. Live or die, uh, laugh or cry. Um, on his chest. Uh... Everyday RC said, "What do you? I see. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna favor these. I always said on the Nordcast, I'm, there's three things I'm never gonna talk about: uh, fucking uh, Tolkien uh, or Frank Herbert, MMA, and I think the other one was. Uh, well, I forget what the other one was because I pretty much talk about everything else. But uh, if you ask me MMA questions, I'm gonna prioritize them. Masvidal versus Usman. Uh, it. I, I would have preferred Masvidal versus McGregor. I thought that was imminent." Um, I honestly, Masvidal is one of my favorite fighters and has been for like 15 years, well, about 14 years. Uh, he is, talk about a guy that has hung around the elite forever. He has been elite his entire career. He hasn't been finished in like 10 years. Um, lost every one of the, his losses is like a contested decision that could have gone either way. He's a, he's a monster and he's finally stopped playing it safe. And I love that he got popular. He fucking deserved it. But I think Usman will crush him, honestly. Um, Masvidal could knock him out. And Masvidal's a way better striker, way more well-rounded. But I think Usman will just grind him. Just grind him. Just inject. Um, I did. That was the Colin and Jimmy episode. And boy, did we have some fucking stories. That's why I was so bummed that audio was... You know what? I'm going to look for that fucking audio. I probably don't have it. I've gone through like three computers. But I'm going to look for it. Maybe it can be saved with some kind of... Um, Sonic, you know, when you watch like audio wash, uh, compression or something like that. I doubt it. I tried some things back then, but we'll see. Royal Horman says, check, check. Stream working great. Belgium on schedule, uh, on the schedule. Love it to be. I hope so. Uh, fuck man. Thank you for checking in. H how is it over there? Uh, man, this thing jumps every time I touch it. Spotafuck. What's up, brother? Maria Cruz, 928. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, haven't even been able to save myself hitherto. Uh, Don Grogan, what's up, brother? I'm, gl I'm glad you did the thing. The thing that 
the clicking. Uh, I had to learn all this shit too. I am a complete fucking neo luddite. Uh, technology is frightening to me, and I've had to go outside of my comfort zone to even get on these things. Uh, yeah, Mark Noah Eric is one of the most interesting dudes I ever met. Uh, he's a commercial airline pilot and always has been, even throughout his career with the Anti Heroes. Owns some restaurants down in Atlanta. I uh, flies for UPS, but um, he won that court case against New Line Cinema when they used the Anti Heroes logo in American History X. He won a massive amount of money. Uh, the the word on the street is sixty five million dollars. So he set because he had trademarked it when he was like sixteen. He trademarked those cross M, those cross M sixteens. He's like, I'll trademark it. What the fuck? Trademarks invincible. If you have trademark and somebody uses it without your permission, you can take their head off their shoulders and take it home with you. And uh, he took the money. So this is what he did with the money. He started these two programs, these two fucking programs, nonprofit organizations. One of them goes to the South, South Pacific and repatriates, the finds, finds, locates, and repatriates the remains of American war dead from World War II. Uh, back to and gives them a proper burial and gives the, the remains to the family. Isn't that fucking amazing? And the other thing he does is equally amazing. He restores World War II era jets. Uh, uh, not jets. I mean, maybe he maybe he restored a Measure Smith. I don't know, but um, because that was the only jet in World War II. But he restores World War II airplanes and then takes the last surviving pilots up for one last flight in the plane that they flew when they were. When they were in the war. Isn't that fucking incredible? Now that I think about it though. If I had Mark Noah on this thing. All we would do. Is talk about World War II. Because that is one of my pet subjects. Along with the Black Plague. Well the pandemic of 1348. Because those are the two most. Pivotal events in modern and ancient history. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Oh dude. Uh, Kush King. Asked, asked if there's going to be like a, uh, a cover album and or acoustic shit. Yes, it's happening. It was happening right up until this closed down. And we're, we're still doing recording. Jason's still doing a lot of recording. Uh, catching up on things that I don't need to be there for. And we're going to get back into it as soon as possible. Um, do you, Mikazi Skin says, do you remember the BFB 54 Polygon Earth Crisis show at the Rat? Hell yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, shit, man. Uh, the rat shows do start to blur, but, um, I, I'm going off the top of my head. I'm not giving it a lot of thought, but I would say off the top of my head, my favorite rat show was probably when Blood for Blood played with Life of Agony. Uh, it was only like our fourth or fifth show. It was the first really good show we got, and it was because somebody canceled. We just jumped in. It was the most packed I've ever seen the rat. It was shortly after River Runs Red came out. So they had just exploded. But when the show was booked, they hadn't exploded yet. So they probably should have been at Avalon. Or even the fucking, uh, what was the name of that fucking joint? The theater. I don't remember. I, fuck. Um, but there were like 700 people packed into the rat, which holds about 300. There was fucking dancing. And by dancing, I mean horrific violence. On the stairs, the back stairs. You couldn't go in the dressing room without getting kicked in the head. There was nowhere safe. People were hiding behind the bars. It was Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Uh, their show at the Middle East a couple of weeks later was Looney Tunes. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Seciete Trace. Uh that it, I, I love that connection. That it, That's what a cover can do sometimes. Uh, drugstore Cowboy asks if I'm still playing any of the Soulsborne games. I haven't. I haven't touched a video game in fucking four months. Um, I'm trying to get all this stuff happening. Uh, the live stuff. I'm getting... Uh, I got... Nodcasts and these other series and stuff backed up now. Um, so they'll keep coming. Um... Uh, Damn straight, Mark Noah wrote two of the best, maybe even more. Um, my favorite song by them is surprising. A lot of people are always surprised when I say this. Return to Manzanar. Um, what was that off of? I think it was American Pie. I think that song is fucking haunting. All right, where are we at? 35 minutes. We'll go to 45 minutes. We'll do 10 more minutes, unless something 
unless something catches my, you know, some tangent. Randy Riley, what's up, brother? Uh, wow, we're up to fucking 60. 61. Numbers are growing. Fuck. Brian Bevel, what's up, brother? Bleak Forest, what's going on, brother? <laughs> I'm not... For, bleak forecast. Uh, I ain't touching that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, Jared Miller, Salt Life Agony. Oh, yeah, yeah, QE2. Yeah, they were awesome. Um, real violent band back in the day. Real violent. Um, I haven't heard of them. Uh, the Kill Slug. Uh, Gallen Burke, too. What's going on there? Uh, always camels with me just because they tend to be cheaper. Uh, Rowell asks, um, what's my opinion on the GNR reunion? Uh, kind of indifferent. They, they, don't get me wrong. That, that Appetite for Destruction and, and even the Use Your Illusions were like seminal albums to me when I was a kid. But um, I, I don't really care about that shit. Uh, they do a new good album. Cool. Uh, I, I I probably shouldn't sound so dismissive. Be nice. What's going on, brother? From Iceland. Fuck yeah. Reykjavik? Uh, thank you for checking in. Jordan Daniels. What's going on, brother? Thank you. Thank you. Um, somebody hit me with something entertaining. Because otherwise I'll be wrapped. Well, we still got a few more minutes. Like nine minutes. Like, this is like a mandatory thing. I, I got to stay on it for nine more minutes or, uh, you know, I'll get in trouble. I do pray for you, brother. Uh, Sprit to dick. Seeing if I missed anything. I hate it when I miss shit. Eric Lynch says, I just got yelled by the guy at FedEx. Holy shit. He's, he was doing his taxes at FedEx and the language on. I do, I do swear a lot. I, I, I don't try to. It's, uh, I don't want to, to be honest. Um, I'm quite articulate. I don't need to resort to fucking profanity. But I read somewhere it's a, it's a sign of uh, earnestness. It's a sign of sincerity uh, when used in casual conversation. That and the fact that, you know, you're coarse and vulgar, of course. But Spartatic. S-P-R-T-H-H-F-K. There you go. Wanted me to say his name. Uh yeah, hysterical hyperbole and hot air holocaust is my hallmark. Ha ha ha. How far can I take the uh, alliteration? I don't know. I'm good at that though. I don't know why. Thank you, Scott. You want to hear something? Connor Drury asking me about Jocko Willink. You talk about the podcaster, right? Um, and that he had a band with Elgin and shit. He's still into hardcore. You know, I came across him on one of those. Drager or Prager University uh, fucking commercials. And I hate that shit. Uh, most of it. Like Candace Owens or whatever fucking name is she. She ought to have her tongue burned out of her mouth for some of the stuff she's fucking said. Um, but um, I watched his little thing. I didn't know he's a podcaster. I didn't know what he was. I know his story now. I know he's a Navy SEAL and all that stuff. I love the extreme ownership thing because I practice it in my own life. The difference is I don't, I don't hold anybody else to that standard because life's crazy and it takes a long time for a person to come to terms and have to say to themselves, I have to take extreme ownership of my life. It's a process. It's not something you're born with. It's not something you wake up with. you got to work at it. So I'm lenient with other people. But, yeah, in my own case, I practice that myself. Um, and I do find him fascinating. And he is into hardcore. There's no doubt about it. Ben Brown, what's up, Rob? Oh, brother. Uh, I'm sorry. My, my condolences. I saw that. I just I just happened to see... Your um, uh, your post and and, and it, it 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 pricked me. Um, bleak forecast. Uh, Doom the band came to see us when we played our first show in Edinburgh, Scotland, and Ian, who was mad into them, I got into them later. I had not actually been into them at that point. The, I'm talking about the original Doom came to our show in either Glasgow or Edinburgh. And Ian was a monster fan of them. We hung out with them. They were wicked, laid back, cool, fucking cool guys. Uh, they were one of the few people at the show. It was actually a poorly attended show. I was psyched to play Glasgow 
or Edinburgh because I thought it would be a real working class audience, but it was actually like vegan brownie nerdy kids, like the little big pants, bigger loser. You know, <laughs> I was I was sad. I was like, ah, oh. well, then when we went back there again, that was our first time. Then we went back there again. It was much more what I expected. But yeah, Doom came out. Um, I Hate God. Uh, Buzz Oven was probably my favorite band uh, out of that whole stuff. Grief was great. I don't know if you ever heard Winter. Uh, there's a couple of bands now named Winter, but there was an old Doom band called Winter that I found hypnotic. I could listen to them for fucking hours. Um. Uh, Oh, dude, Chucky. Yeah. Uh, we, me and me and Big Joe, uh, Ramallah's guy, my old uh, bro from Detroit, we used to go to uh, Del Taco and order uh, uh, at least 100 because it would come to $69. We thought that was funny. Uh, of the chicken tacos, and we'd keep them in our pockets. He did more than me. I'd just leave them in the car, but he'd keep them. He called them pocket tacos. He'd put them everywhere, so like he'd go for his keys and find one and be like, oh, I'd be like, that was, we haven't been to Del Taco in nine days. I'm like, you're going to get diphtheria. But didn't stop him, and he didn't get diphtheria. Uh, crowbar. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 would, they were the first band to really do that. Doom, ka, doom. Jeff Ooms, what's up, brother? Oh, shit, I Tolkien, you'd have to ask me something. Uh, and I'm not studied up on it the way I once was. I had a funny run-in with the anal cunt dudes. Uh, Seth Seth was a huge fan of Blood for Blood when it came out. Uh, he was the one that got Phil, Phil, Phil and Selmo from Pantera. This is on the Hurt You demo. I don't know if Seth stayed in stayed into it later. But the Hurt You demo, he was all about it. He, he, he was one of the first people to kind of hype it, to be honest. And uh, he was... At a show uh, that a bunch of my friends were at. I won't mention their names. One of them just got picked up on a Rico beef. The other one's dead. But he did that thing where he th threw the beers at the crowd. And he hit one of them in the head. This is, a, this is one of the gangs. One of the crews. So they fucked them up beyond belief on stage. Bad. That, Seth had no problem with that. So they played again. These same guys came out and stood up front. And uh, he pretended. He saw them. And pretended to throw beers at them and laughed because they had kind of squashed the beef, right? After they go, after Seth hit the these one of these guys with the beers and they beat him up after the show, they kind of squashed it. So the next show, they stand up front. He pretends to throw a beer at them and kind of laughs, and they laugh too. And then he suddenly whips the beer in one of their fucking faces, a full unopened fucking can of beer. They fucked him up again. I was like, that's commitment. I was like, that's commitment. Uh, Seth was what he said he was. Uh, he, 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 he walked it. Uh, Bobby Barretta, what's going on, brother? I am fucking glad to see you in this thread. I hadn't seen you for a while. It was fucking, um, uh, it was alarming me. Um, I'm glad to see you here. Um, oh, uh, Corey, I, I got a bunch of people. Um, I would love to do something with some of the Lionheart guys. Um. I got a commitment from, uh, not a commitment, but a, an agreement from uh, Eugene S. Robinson. He's one of my favorite podcasters. Um, just a bunch of people. Um, so if I can figure out how to do that, I'm on the cusp of figuring out how to do that, how to do like FaceTime live from afar. And I don't even have to do it live. As long as I can record it, I don't care. I'll just put it up. But um, uh, keep, this keeps skipping on me. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I bet Crowbar and Pantera, that would be a sick pick. Bad Luck 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carnivore and Typo Negative. Uh, Carnivore Retaliation and Slow, Deep, and Hard had a seminal uh, impact on my fucking songwriting. Lyrics, particularly, lyrics, particularly. Along with uh, Suicidal Tendency. On the uh, How Can I Laugh Tomorrow, Controlled by Hatred, Lights, Camera, Revolution, and even a little bit more, uh, the, uh, the one after it. I forget what it was called. What was the one after it? Yeah, you know, the one that came out after Lights, Camera, Revolution.
agnostic front shows back in the day were categorically insane. Insane. Um, eat the turnbuckle. George Steele. <laughs> Bradford. Brad Taylor says, uh, a crowbar pit has to be like stirring cement. That's a good way to put it. That's lyrical. Uh, Retaliation is indeed one of the best albums ever fucking made. Um, I have bought that album in slow, deep, and hard back on tape when it came out probably like 65 times. That was one of those, uh, hearing Retaliation and slow, deep, and hard, along with uh, How Can I Laugh Tomorrow and Controlled by Hatred, um, I felt like somebody reached out, Out of Rebellion, thank you, uh, Ira McDowell, uh, Out of Rebellion, some great songs on that as well. It was when they got funky that they lost me. I'm sorry. I love Mike Muir. I love him. But uh, uh, the funky shit. Sorry. Uh, uh, you guys, aren't, a lot of you guys aren't going to remember this. Some of you will. But when the Red Hot Chili Peppers got popular, all of a sudden thrash bands were exploring their fucking funky side and talking about it all serious. Like, I remember this thrash band Mordred doing interviews like, if we want to explore our funky side, we're damn well going to explore our funky side. I'm like, go fuck yourself. You fucking nerd. White people shouldn't even joke about playing funk. It's against the rules. You don't fucking do it. But um, those albums, uh, Slow, Deep, and Hard, uh, Retaliation, fucking, uh, what's up? Real Tay Loud. Uh, Controlled by Hatred, How Can I Laugh Tomorrow. That was the, fr- I was listening to heavy, Aggressive music, Slayer, and all that stuff. And Rain and Blood changed my life. But the lyrics meant very little to me. Uh, Those albums I just mentioned, it was like somebody reached out and touched me on the fucking forehead and said, you're not insane. Because I thought I was crazy um, until I heard... And then it also changed my musical trajectory because I said, I could fucking do this too. Uh, You don't have to do lyrics about what everybody else is fucking doing. Um... yeah, uh, those that, those were that was an, those were important ev- events in my life. Um, hearing those records because I, I was like in high school. I've said I've talked about this before. Uh, does my fucking hair look? Uh, probably awesome, but um, can't be sure without a mirror. Yeah, I can. Um, I was my fondest wish was to walk into high school with a rifle. And watch those smugs. Now, I'm not making light of this. I'm just telling you the truth. I got I can't lie. I'm, I'm glad I didn't do it. But I, I wanted to walk into my school and, and turn those smug smiles into leers of terror. I'm glad I didn't do it. And this is what I try to say. Uh, I, you know, if anybody young out there is feeling that way. Hi, high school means shit. It only, mean, it, it only matters when you're in it. it. Your life doesn't even begin until you're out of high school. But when you're in there, it seems like the entire universe... If I hadn't been allowed to be truant, I was truant like 90% of the time. Had I not been allowed to be, I probably would have done something asinine. But um, I'm glad I didn't. But those albums made me feel like I wasn't insane. Um, Primus, I wouldn't call Primus funk metal or anything. Primus was their own thing. I wasn't wild about them. They had a song here and there. I'll tell you something fucked up, though. In the 90s, the pits of at a Primus show were really violent. I think it's because it brought out, like, MTV people and some of the hardcore people. Um, yeah, I didn't, like, send me your money. That, But the rest of that album was fucking awesome. Uh, what's up, Smoking Throttle? Um, yeah, Les Claypool's... Uh, all those guys, uh, true legitimate uh musicians and unique um i was just talking to dom last week he asked me about doing something like a like a like a you know a side project with a bunch of guys we know um yeah i feel you uh the hunter um uh i love it love it i i i am a deep metalhead like deep into it. Uh, but lyrically, a lot of it, I, I don't care about fantasy. Um, if I'm going to do fantasy, I'm going to read Tolkien. I don't, music performs another function for me. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Dave Goldsmith. I have not. I have not heard of um, him. Uh, that the, the hat's a king, just a kangle. Uh, Alan, uh, sweet baby Alan from Ramallah just gave it to me one night. Oh, that's a great question. Just can't. Uh, Ninka skin, uh, Ninkazi skin asks. Um, just can't hate enough for ugly and proud. I love them both, but it's got to be just can't hate enough. That album was another one of those four that I mentioned. It's in there. It's in there. Lyrically, I, 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 I wouldn't be the person I was without that fucking, without that record. Um, there's something so bleak about it, so cynical, but practical. Uh, it 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 was like, yeah, just can't hate enough. Ugly and Proud's great, but it just can't hate enough was was the album. Um, I, Justin Jack asked about Cannibal Corpse. Um, I did listen to them. Um, I listened to all of that '90s earache and Florida death metal stuff. Um, uh, they wouldn't be one of my favorite bands or nothing, but I, I, I respect what they do for certain. Um, and they're holding it down. They keep doing it. Um, and it, I, I can respect that. Um. Uh, sp sp spot fuck. Um, I stockpile. Um, and I'm way down anyway. But um, yeah, I used to worry about that. Um, Madball was was and is they they are one of the best live bands of all time. Uh, Freddie Madball is the vi at least visually at least uh his stage show. Um. He, he is New York hardcore incarnate. Uh, he is the living incarnation of it. He is one of the best, most natural frontmen. Um, yeah, that and that's that. Um, that's correct, Jerry L. Uh, Larry Lalonde from Primus was the original uh, guitarist in Possessed. Yep. Uh, and Possessed, of course, is one of the original founders of what could be, you know, later on called death metal and black metal. Uh, them and, you know, Celtic Frost. Venom, I guess. Only 13. That's a great song. We, 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 uh, Say Siete Trace, uh, said, uh, I saw Blood for Blood as the spiritual successor to Shia Terra. Uh, on the first record, that's what we were aiming for. Um, uh, I was like, why aren't there more Shia Terras? Let's make more Shia Terras. But after that, we we went in a different direction and on a lot of levels it's it, it, we still kept it's still in our dna but we weren't aiming to sound like that anymore we we, we just went where we went but uh, as far as hip hop goes uh a lot a lot more than people think um i have no problem with hip hop my my problem was with the uh paper gangster thing the that whole trip back in the 90s when Kids that now would be into emo were back then pretending that they were tough guys. But uh, when I when I write when I'm writing lyrics for for whether it's Blood for Blood Ramallah or whatever, I'm not listening to hardcore. I'm listening to hip hop because uh, the lyrical cadences of Blood for Blood and Ramallah are Spitfire, and they're not on the one, and they're not like A B A B rhyme schemes. What I got to do to find a better way to make it through? That's not standard hardcore. I'm listening to hip hop. Um, Wu Tang. I can always go back to them. Tupac, of course. Eminem. Eminem is the man. What the fuck can I say? The guy is one of the most talented fucking musicians on earth. Um, and Rap God is the best rap song ever written, except for everything Hobson did. I think Hobson is the new Messiah. Although I think times change so fast, but that kid saving fucking hip hop. Um, or he did at least. Uh, maybe he's done his job. Um, all right, the battery on this thing is running out, so I'm going to wrap up in the next, like, five minutes. Wow, this went long. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, oh, 36 Chambers, definitely. Um, Ramallah played with Wisdom and Change. They are the fucking band. I went up to them and said, I love what you're doing. You do big rock pots. They're like, what do you think we learned it? I was like, I gave them knuckles. That was to the singer. Um, I think, I, I actually ripped, somebody asked if I lip, uh, listened to Slain. I actually... Uh, ripped uh, some slain on uh, just one shot. Uh, uh, that guitar was actually a Kramer Pacer American. 
uh, that had the Shia Terra sticker on it. And uh, it got stolen. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to go, guys, because this is literally running out. But next time I will tell some Skyhead stories. We had some. They were probably perhaps one of my favorite fucking uh, bands to tour with. And we had some fucking fun. Um, but I'm sorry, guys, I have to jump because it's just going to die in a second anyway. But, um, greets to, uh, Adrian the Metal Outlaw. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I will check that out. Little Ugly Maine. I'll check it out. Oblivion Access. All right, guys, my love to y'all. I'm going to do the prayer and get the fuck out of here. See if I can do it. What I got to do to find a better way to make it through? There's got to be a better way than living like this. I was waiting for a better way and waiting for a better day. I waited so long that I lost my faith. I was waiting. I was hating. I was pleading. I was bleeding. I was praying for something that never came. I, perhaps you, prayed for something that never came. So bang. 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 And no more. Ah! All right, guys. My love to you all. Go team. No head in the oven. Thank you for stopping by. We'll do this again now that I know the tech works. And I'm going to plan the next one for probably Saturday night. I'll put the posts up and everything. All of you, thank you for coming out. Uh, team No Head in the Oven. See you later, guy.